So here, a five kilogram fish swimming at one meters per second swallows an absent minded one kilograms fish swimming toward a velocity that brings both fish to a halt. So I have mass one, V one initial, let me change color. Mass two, and change color again, brings both fish to a halt. That's V final for both fish. So I just put V final. So we have to read this and make sure we get the information out of the problem first. So now I have to figure out what the problem is asking me to do. What, what is it asking me to find? Uh, let's choose a different color. That's velocity two initial, the initial velocity of the little fish. So those are the variables involved. And now I have to think, so what physics idea is going on here? We have no mention of forces, no mention of acceleration, but we do have a change in velocity for sure. Both of them have a change in velocity. So I got to think about how am I going to go ahead and solve this? Ideas. That's the question. Do you have ideas? Okay. Because this is essentially a collision. It's not a classic collision because one just swallowed the other one. But it's a collision. It's two things that met together. And with collisions, we said in our collisions, because the collision happens in a short amount of time, we're going to say that momentum is conserved during a collision. Momentum relates mass and velocity. And look, everything we have is either a mass or a velocity. So that's, you know, the, the real physics in doing physics is not solving the math problems. The physics is seeing how the things fit together and what ideas will help you. And so this here, I identify from what I'm asked to find, as well as looking at the variables I'm given, that I'm going to use conservation of momentum. So I am going to draw a figure because as a physics teacher, I always draw a figure. So here is M1 moving with V1 initial. And then I have fish two. If they're going to stop, what can you tell me about the direction of fish two? It's got to be the opposite direction. So fish two, it's going to be like this, going with speed two initial or velocity two initial. I have a direction there, so I can call it velocity. And then in the end, for my final state, I have... Yeah, should have. Okay, I'm sorry. I have to change my fish to make him bigger. I have them stuck together with V final equals. And it tells us comes to a halt, so V final is zero. And while I'm doing this, let me put in the numbers. M1 was five kilograms. Well, I'm going to zoom so I can write a little more carefully. And V1 initial was one meter per second. V2 initial, we don't know. And M2 is equal to one kilogram. So there my figure is complete. I've got everything laid out. Conservation momentum. What does conservation mean in physics? Okay, something's the same before and after. It doesn't change. So we're going to have momentum initial equals momentum final is our condition 
for conservation of momentum. So I calculate the momentum initial and the momentum final. Momentum, remember, P is the symbol for momentum, and P is defined as, change color, momentum is mass times velocity. So I have momentum initial is equal to mass 1 V1 initial plus mass 2 V2 initial. Put in the values I have for those. Mass 1 was 5 kilograms. V1 initial was 1 meter per second. Mass 2 is 1 kilogram. And V2 initial, I don't know. So I left that as a variable. Now, keep in mind, normally I would have not put in numbers here. I'm doing that because I think the students are more comfortable with that. Momentum final, they're together, so I'm going to combine M1 plus M2 times their final speed. And I'm going to write this out even though it's ridiculous. 5 plus 1 times 0. What's 5 plus 1? 6 times 0 is 0. So the momentum final is 0. So applying this condition now, I'm going to have 5 times 1 is 5. Kilogram times meters per second plus one kilogram times V2 initial. So that's momentum initial equals momentum final. And now I just have to do some algebra. I want to solve for V2 initial, so I'm going to subtract five kilogram meters per second from both sides. And I have one kilogram times V21 initial equals minus five kilograms times meters per second. Well, if I want to get the V2 by itself, V2 initial by itself, my final step is divide both sides by one kilogram. And now just canceling. Notice the kilogram unit is going to cancel here. And so I have for my final answer. So it is negative? It is negative because it's going the opposite direction. Yes. Okay. The, the difference is if it says what's the magnitude or if it says, well, it says show that the speed of the smaller fish, technically the speed is the magnitude. And so that's why... They have it has a plus because it's one dimensional motion we usually use the word velocity we just use a minus sign for going to the left and a positive sign for going to the right again okay so you need to just scroll like that I put V initial and I put that and I said, or it's this is the velocity. Or five meters per second is velocity. Like kind of changing this. Well, whole five meters per second is the speed. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Minus five meters per second is the velocity. Oh, okay. Ooh. I'm going to have to go double check if I used it right. That's right. But, okay, verb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I get it. One or I verb, direction. noun, whatever. Yeah, one half direction, one Right. Okay, um, Danny, I know you had your hand up, but I've got to get to the lecture now. Right, rather than having you add another question. Okay. Okay, so continuing with chapter three, we talked about work. Work being force times distance, but there was one apparent or additional thing we have to have times distance parallel. If we have the distance that something moves is perpendicular to the force, there is no work. Well, I have a clicker question up.
coming up right after this. So get your clickers out. Two things occur, must occur for work to happen. You have to have a force and you have to have motion parallel to that force. So here we see this young lady. I only presume she's young with the pose. You can't really tell. She is applying a force to that bar. The bar hopefully is going up. If she's applying a force to the bar, that force is upward because she's pushing it up. The bar moves up. Is she doing work on the bar? If she pushes up and it moves up. Yes. Yes. It's a positive work because they're the same direction. Now, because we can't see motion, let's suppose that things are going all wrong for the poor young lady. So she's pushing up as hard as she can, but the bar is coming down. What's the work for her? If she pushes up and the motion is downward, it's going to be a negative work. She's doing negative work because she's putting force one direction, it's moving the other. A negative work will learn really soon, like after the quicker question, is taking away energy. So she's taking away energy from the bar instead of giving it energy if she's pushing up and it comes down. And then one might say, well, does that mean that she's gaining something since she's taking it away? Sadly, our bodies don't work that way. Actually, I say sadly. If our bodies work that way. You know, I go to the gym and press iron. I do work this way. It gives it back to me. I would never run out of energy. That would be good. But then again, I would never lose weight because I wouldn't be expending anything. Okay, so the question I told you is coming up. So if you push against the stationary wall for several minutes, you do work on the wall. No work on the wall. Work on the ground or both A and C, you do both work on the wall and the ground. I don't think it's going to show me your answers. <sighs> The version we had last semester, something went wrong and it wouldn't allow me to re-pull. So, you know, if people did poorly, I couldn't ask it again. Now I can ask it again, but I can't see if people did poorly. Okay, you're still not in, Mariah. Oh, yes, you are. I'm sorry. I still need to. Yeah, two people. It's not recording answers for Mariah. It's because I need to add in your clickers thing. Um, I think Ivy's the other one that has. I don't know. I'll have to check. Um, if you look on Moodle, you'll see your clicker participation grade. If it's a zero, we need to figure out why, because everybody is answering. So when we get things straightened out, everybody will have their points. Which makes. You feel, oh, hey, it is showing the numbers. Yay! just didn't do it till afterward. Zero, five, one, two. So we had a majority, five out of eight. Let's have Sam give us some reasoning behind this. So what answer do you think it is, Sam? And give us why you think so. Uh, I put work on the ground. Okay. You're still applying a force, but it's not moving. You'd still have to be doing work somehow. So it said two things that did work work is done, application of force movement, or something by that force. Yeah. So the, the the answer C was not correct, but your explanation was correct. It's no work because not moving, and you have to have that motion. Right. You can't have just one. You have to have both. And so this guy who I'm pretty sure is not our textbook author, it, a lot of the pictures in here are the author or the author's family. I think that's kind of cool. Um, but he's pushing. He normally we'd say he's going to get tired if he pushes for several minutes. Right. Everybody agree you get tired after pushing for several minutes. So we tend to say, doesn't that mean he's done work? And that's why we have to step back and say, 
we're talking about mechanical work. We're not talking about biological work. We're not talking about his body burning calories, converting energy. We're talking about him doing work on an object. And he's not doing work on the wall because the motion of the wall was zero. He's not doing work on the ground because the motion of the ground was zero. So he's not doing work on either of them. He's still expending energy internally, though. Yes? So in order to, for something to do work, there has to be motion on both sides, like something moving? Is that what you're trying to say? Well, in order for something to do work, you have to have force and motion of the thing the force oh, is acting on. Force yeah. Oh, okay, true, true, true. Okay. And it has to be parallel to the force. So if a car is sliding down the road this way and you're pushing that direction for some random reason, it's moving, but you're not doing any work on it because it's not moving the direction you're pushing. Okay, so now energy. Because I've used energy a few times today and, and previously. What is energy? Energy, at least the way I like to define it best, is the ability to do work. So I have the ability to do work. How do I have the ability to do work? What do I do every day that gives me the ability to do work? Do what? Energy. Well, what, what do I do to give me the ability to do work? I, what do I do that gives me energy, the ability to do work? I eat food. I love to fill up with energy. It makes me happy. Um, doesn't make my wife happy when I get energized, but, you know. So I eat food because that food has chemicals that we will learn later when we get to chemistry. Those chemicals, we can break the bonds and form new bonds and release energy that then I use to do my work. I also, you could have, if you want, said breathe. Because the oxygen we breathe in is also an important factor in that energy conversion. Right? Our bodies are complicated things. I'm not a biologist, so... Let's not go any further. But energy is something that's going to produce changes in the matter. And so we can see things, energy, if you transport something, my cell phone. My cell phone transports something. What does it transport? Doesn't have to be super technical. Okay, she got super technical. Electrical energy is correct. I was just thinking it transports information. I think you said messages. It's transporting information. That's still energy required to transport the information. The information isn't energy, it's transporting it that is the energy. You know, because I could have a thought in my mind, but if that thought's going to get to you, there's going to have to be some, some energy involved. In the case of that right now, it's the energy of the sound waves that come out of my body. So something's being transferred from one place to another. And it's units named after, was it William Prescott Jewel? It's a guy's last name and it's pronounced Jewel like, you know, pretty baubles, jewels. I had a teacher who went on a rampage that we should pronounce it jowls, mostly because he thought it was funny, I'm sure. So the unit of energy is a joule. The unit of work was also a joule. So the unit of work, work was force times distance. What's the unit of force? Newtons. What's the unit of distance? Meters. So that means that a Newton times a meter is equal to a joule, which has a symbol of capital J. Now, of course, newtons are kilograms times meters per second squared, so that's also equal to kilogram times meter per second squared times meter or kilogram times meter squared per second squared. So all of these are the same unit. We're going to write J every time because it's the shortest one to write of all of those. The one on the right is the clearest of them it has all the base units kilograms meters and seconds but the joule is the easiest now power and energy are two things that are easily confused 
I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Marilyn Voss Savant, the world's most intelligent person, or highest IQ. And she has a column in the newspapers called Ask Marilyn, where people send in their, their questions that are hard to answer. And she you know, shares her wisdom. Unfortunately, her wisdom in physics is not as high as her, as her knowledge in other areas, her knowledge in physics. So somebody said, what's going to take more work? If I have two bags of groceries and I can only carry one at a time and I need to go up two flights of stairs, one option would be to take one bag, carry it all the way to the top, set it down, go to the bottom, pick up the other bag, take it all the way to the top and set it down. That was the one option. And the other option was take one bag, take it up one fly stairs, set it down, go back down the bottom, pick up the next bag, bring it to the middle, then pick up the first bag, take it to the top, then come down to the middle, pick up the second bag, and take it to the top. You understand the two different options? Okay, so both options end, start with both bags at the bottom and with both bags at the top. And both options are gonna, of course, require fully traversing the steps two times. And so the question was, which one is gonna take less work? Now we've learned work is force times distance parallel. So we're working against gravity. What direction is the force of gravity? Down. So only the vertical motion is going to matter for the work against gravity. So we look at this problem and the physics says, well, the work that she's going to do ultimately is the weight of one bag times the change in you know, two floors plus the weight of the other bag times the change in two floors. So the answer is it's the same exact amount of work that you're doing on the bag in both cases. So one answer that Marilyn could have said is, well, it's going to be the same amount of work done to the bag in both cases. But you can get more technical because remember we said if you push on the wall, you're doing no work as far as physics is concerned, but you're still expending energy. And work is something that is transforming energy. So your body internally is doing work when you push on the wall, even though you're not doing any work on the wall. And so Marilyn could have said, well, what is truly different about those two is you have to set down and pick up each bag an extra time with the one that you stop halfway. And since your body doesn't recover energy, you're just doing, you know, internal energy is expended both setting it down and picking it up. Then you expended more energy when you went up set it down, picked it up. So she could have said your body's gonna require more energy with the one that you set it down and pick it up. But she went off, <laughs> she went off the chart and she said, oh, it's gonna be less work to do the one where you go up halfway, set it down and so on because you're not gonna be as tired at the end. What she had there was a fundamental confusion between work and power. Power is the rate at which you do the work. So something with a high power does a lot of work in a short amount of time. Something with a low power takes a lot more time to do the work. So the one where you set them down and pick them up again is going to take longer because of the time it takes to set them down and pick them up. And because of that, you're not going to be as tired at the end because you didn't use your energy as quickly. You use less power. But tired is not a measurement of work. It would have been the same mechanical work in both cases and actually more biological work for the one she chose. So why do I tell this whole long story? Because it's important to know what power is. Power is the rate at which work is done. So if you have a, an automobile that has little power, that means that it can still do work, it can still move, but it's gonna take a lot longer to get up to speed because it can't do the work as fast. If you have a car with a lot of power, it'll be able to get up to speed very quickly. And so that's why we like powerful cars. We like to go from zero to really fast and get thrown back in the seat, right? Probably the wrong crowd to be talking about, oh, we like hot cars. 
just like it was the wrong crowd last period to be was the last period to be talking about how to tackle and whatnot in football. Sorry. So power is the rate at which work is done, and it has units of what's the unit for work? Okay, joules. The units, the units for time is seconds. So it has units of joules per second. And now we're probably a little bit lazy. Joules per second isn't that hard to write. But we have a new name, the watt. Now we have some confusion in symbols. The textbook likes to use W for weight. I don't, right? I use F sub G for weight. We have W is the symbol that means work. And we have W that is the unit for power. So you have to be really careful with W. You have to know what you're talking about. If it has, says, does, you know, this many joules, that's work. If it says, has this many W's, that's watts. So it, it takes a little careful concentration when you see the W. Are they talking about work or are they talking about power? So remember, as a unit, W equals watts, and that's power. As a symbol or a variable, W equals work. And I just am not going to use W for weight because then you would have as a symbol W could be two different things. And I don't need that confusion in my life. So hopefully you understand why F of G is always used for weight in my world. Right? Right? I, I use... Weight is F subscript G, F of G, F sub G. Yeah, F of G, you know, like when you hang somebody in F of G? No, not that. Okay, so see if we understood the whole long story about Marilyn Lassavant. A job can be done slowly or quickly. Both may require the same amount of work, but different amounts of... Just give you a warning. Okay, Ashton. We all answered. Yay, everything is working now. Okay, we had a pretty good split here. Gabby, can you clear it up? Uh, I put C because you said power is not the same as work, and she was confusing. Right. So that's right. Power is not the same as work. What is the difference between them? Work is going to be the same and power is pushing stop. Okay, so work is a transfer of energy. So they have the same units. They're not the same thing, but they're the same units. It's not thinking of anything off. I was trying to think of something in general, but my brain didn't go the right place. Power is the rate that, and you can use two things, rate that work is done or energy is converted, energy is transformed. And rate means how much per time. So that means power is equal to work over change in time or change in energy over change in time. Notice it's not change in work because work is a transfer. So work by its very definition is something went from here to here and we're measuring how much it was that went from here to here. So nothing contains work. I can't say this old bag of bones has this many joules of work in it. We could say I have the ability to do this many joules of work, but that would be this bag of bones has this much energy because it's only work when it's being transferred. 
So power is how quickly you transfer it, and thus the slowly or quickly means that we are referring to a rate. Power. Questions on this? Is it super clear? Neither questions nor clear? Looking for responses. I better move on. I might be waiting a long time. Okay, this comes back to the idea with Marilyn Voss Savant. Potential energy. We have two kinds of energy we'll talk about. We have kinetic energy. Kinetic means motion. So kinetic energy is energy in motion. Something can do work, that means it can apply a force over distance if it's moving. And we can give you a great example. I could, I will not, I could tell Leslie, stand up. And then I can run and just run into her. When I hit her, would I do work on her? Would I apply force? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Would she move? Yes. yes. We have those two things. And her motion would be parallel to the force, right? So I would do work on her. So if I'm moving, I have kinetic energy, the ability to do work on something because I'm moving. That's what kinetic energy is. Potential energy is the ability to do work because of position or configuration. So taking a different example, um, batteries aren't good to drop. Let me find something. Oh, yeah, this is fine to drop. I have a rubber stopper. If I have the rubber stopper here and I let go, it falls down. So when it hit the table, you know, it bounced, it made sound. It didn't work on the table when it hit the table. So it was able to do work on the table because it was elevated above it. And if I have it not as high, it can't do as much work on the table. So the amount of work it can do depends on the height. It depends on its location or configuration. That's what a potential energy is. So potential energy can do work because of where it is. Kinetic energy can do work because it's moving. I totally forgot. Well, we only have five minutes left. I wouldn't have time to do my demonstration. We'll do it at the beginning of next class period about transforming between kinetic and potential energy. So and kinetic energy is able to do work based on motion? Because it's moving, yes. So if I take something and put it at a higher elevation, it has more potential energy, more ability to do work. We calculate that potential energy just by saying, well, what is the force that does the work on this when I let go? When I let go, what does work on the stop? Gravity. And so I'm going to calculate how much work gravity did when I took it from here up to here and say that work that gravity did was stored as potential energy. And so the work is the force. What's the force of gravity equation? Force of gravity is blank times blank. Force of gravity is the mass, units of kilograms, times the, times the acceleration of gravity. So that's the force the gravity was putting on the stopper. Now if I raise the stopper some height h, notice the force was down and the distance was up. So the work is going to be negative. The work to raise it is going to be minus mgh. That, that's how much work I had to put into this to raise it. But if I let go, gravity is going to have a downward force of mg, drops the distance h, gravity is going to do that exact same magnitude of work when it drops back down. So the potential energy is actually defined by its change. So delta pe is equal to minus the work, which is mgh. 
H is the height, yes. So the potential energy that this stopper has, notice that's a delta. Delta is changing. There's a key aspect here that's easy to overlook. Reference point for potential energy. The reference point, point for potential energy is wherever you want it to be. And so the H is going to be the H measured from the place where you set zero potential energy. So if I'm dealing with the tabletop, I'm probably going to say zero potential energy at the tabletop and measure H out from the tabletop. If I'm dealing with the floor, I'm likely to say zero is the height of the floor. And then our potential energy with respect to our reference point is MGH, where H is the distance above the reference point. So that's gravitational potential energy. And this diagram is illustrating if I take a ball and lift it straight up and put it on this top of a podium that's three meters tall. Okay, I can't reach a podium that's three meters tall just for the record. Um, two meters is about here. So, you know, three meters is too high. But if I get the ball up there, it doesn't matter what the path is. If I go straight up, if I go up a ramp, or if I go up steps, the potential energy change or the increase in potential energy in all cases is just going to be the mass of the ball times G multiplied by that three meter height that it went up. So, you know, somebody could have asked Marilyn, which requires less work to take a ball and place it on a platform that's two meters tall, because I can easily put something on a platform two meters tall, or to carry it up the steps to get up there. And in terms of work, how would the work compare? How is the energy change, potential energy change in this case, compared to lifting straight up versus bringing up the stairs to get to the same ending spot from the same starting spot? Change of potential energy is the same because it's just mg times the change in height. So it would be the same work in both cases. But most of us would have a much easier time taking it up the stairs or rolling it up a ramp rather than lifting it straight up if it's a heavy ball. Okay, we're out of time. I'll see you for lab tomorrow. Um, the, the lab scores, I have not looked at the individual reports, but they were lower than anticipated. So make sure you do look at the grading marks and by lab time tomorrow, I'll make sure that there's a way for you to see them if you can't see them now.